Hi everyone, thanks so much for clicking on our Cobalt A29 video. My name's Tommy, and I'm the delivery captain for Seattle Boat Company. And today I wanna to take you through an operations walkthrough of the brand new A29. We're gonna start at the outside of the boat, check the transom out, and then we're gonna start moving inside, check out all the interior features, the helm, all of its operation. If you guys have any questions at all, let us know, we're here to help. Let's go check it out. Starting here at the transom on the A29, your optional hydraulic swim platform. So there are buttons to actually make this raise and lower up and down. Not only that, you do have your flip down swim step at the back here too. Just with the pin, just pull that out and then you can raise and lower it. Make sure this is in the up position along with your hydraulic swim platform before operating the boat. You don't wanna be dragging that behind you, uh, causing anything to break in the mechanisms or the hydraulic lines or something like that. So always make sure it's up before you uh, operate the boat. Taking a look underneath your out drive right down there with your dual props. Also down here, the optional underwater lighting from the SC light controller. So those are RGB lights, as well as your trim temps back here as well. Located underneath the out drive is your transom drain plug. Always make sure your transom drain plug is installed before putting the boat in the water. Looking up on top of the swim platform, this is your tow point for any water sports right here on the grab handle. Your trunk in this particular boat is optioned with the stow, stow and splash uh, swim platform that kind of will deploy outward and then the air compressor can fill that up for you. So that's in the trunk there. Lighting back here, your controls for in and out for your stow mat right there. Let's go ahead and jump up into the boat and then we'll take a look at the rest of the interior. Pull up cleats on both sides, which is really nice. Pull those up, put your lines in. Fender clips around the boat as well for your fenders. This boat has the optional flag pole right back here and that's stored forward in the boat. Transom stereo remote. This boat does have the infinity head unit on it. Where your swim mat is stowed, just undo the buckle and it's stowed right in here. When you are deploying this and bringing it back in on the water, probably a good idea to have the engine running. It actually draws quite a bit of power to actually make it go in and out. Just be careful when you're doing that. Um, it does, again, with the engine running and if people are in the water, just make sure you're not putting into the gear, but you do need to have just a little extra juice just to make sure it's gonna pull it in and out uh, properly. As we move into the boat, um, right at the back here, you saw our foot controls for the um, stow, uh, stow mat on the back. This boat does have the optional battery charger built in. Plug for that's right here. And then because you have the, the air uh, mat in the back, this is your plug for the air compressor. So you can blow that up when you wanna get on the water. Cup holders back here. Your rumble seats are also back here. So you can pull these guys up and just have a different seating position in the very back of the boat. And then right as you walk in, here are your controls for the hydraulic swim platform, up and down, air pump on and off, and inflate or deflate right there for the mat itself. Now when you're operating the hydraulic swim platform, not the flip step, the actual platform itself, the big platform, you have to have the key, the ignition key in the off position in order to operate it. So it's a safety feature that's built in for the platform itself. Um, that way you can raise and lower it safely. Storage, right when we walk into the boat, Nice little drain in the back. When we're entering the boat, your nice big flip-flop back seat here. So you just give it a firm pull forward. Gives you a big lounge on the back side, or if you want to sit facing forward on the interior of the boat, just put it back into its position right there. Starboard side as we come in, cooler area. When you remove the cooler, you can you know put ice in it, put your food and drink, put it back in the boat. Um, if you do have the optional swim mat on the back, the actual air compressor is stored in there. So it is secure into place. Just if you pull that out and wonder what that is, it's the air compressor. Table receptacle over here on the port side. So you can put your dinette table over here. Charging on both sides. And then over by the cooler as well. Your port side seat cushion lifts up. So plenty of storage in here. The optional cockpit table is located in here. The table leg is in here. We've got a couple other accessories in here as well. So the optional flag pole is stored in here. 
with the swim mat option it does come with a bag to stow the mat so that was kind of what the mat came in from the factory you also have in here are some patches just in case it ever you know you get a hole in the mat and you need to replace that and then also in here is for the end of the mat when you're deploying it out this is like a, a pool noodle almost this kind of will help keep the end of the mat afloat while you're deploying it out and then filling it up with air also in here is your battery panel right here with your battery switch when you want to use the boat you're going to turn the battery switch to on right now if you ever have a difficult time starting the boat the position that we had it in is that emergency start position. So that'll actually combine both batteries together, your engine battery and your house battery, and start the engine. Once the engine's running, you wanna turn it to the on position. And then when you're done for the day, turn it to the off position. All your breakers are nicely labeled right down here. One breaker that I typically keep in the off position is number 26 here in the A29, and that is your windless breaker. And you can consult just to make sure that is correct on your chart down here but I leave the windless breaker off. Just don't want anybody accidentally pushing the windless button when you're not trying to use the anchor. You don't want it to accidentally fall you know, overboard or down into the water and potentially scrape up the bottom of the boat. Optional air compressors right here as well. Handheld fire extinguishers on the bulkhead here. And these two points right here are your um, jump points for actually gaining access into the engine compartment. If your batteries are totally dead, you don't want to start the boat by jumping it from these points right here, but because this boat has the hydraulic motor hatch, you can't just lift this up to get access to your batteries to start jump start the engine. Those points, you can put a jump pack on there, raise the engine hatch, and then go ahead and connect your jump pack to the battery to actually jump start the engine if needed. <clears throat> Gaining access into the motor box, we have a little switch right over here. Go ahead and press and hold into the up position to go ahead and raise that up. Once you have that all the way open, great access into the engine compartment. This boat is optioned with the 430 horsepower Volvo Penta V8 engine. The owner's manual will go through exactly the break-in procedure and everything like that. And I also have some literature that I can send you if you're interested in checking that out. Between 20 and 50 hours is gonna be the first service on the engine and then every 100 hours after that. And you can keep track of that on the hour meter at the helm. Dual batteries in this boat. One's your house battery, one's your cranking battery. You'll see some steering in the back corner there for the outdrive. Right in front of the engine, you have your Garmin transducer, and that's sending a signal down to the lake bed or seabed and gonna pop back up and tell you how deep the water is. The sea strainer right here, this is your raw water intake for the head, for the toilet. And it does have a valve associated with that. Make sure you're cycling that valve every month or two just to make sure that nothing's sticking in the event that you do have a leak at some point, um, which is highly unlikely, but again, if it does leak, you wanna make sure that that valve is operational to shut off the water from coming into the boat. Halon system, automatic fire extinguisher in this, in this boat, which is mounted right here against the bulkhead. The optional battery chargers mounted against the back bulkhead right there. Plenty of room, great space in the engine compartment for servicing and uh, just really nicely laid out and put together. There are some LED lights in here as well that can be turned on from the helm if you need to actually see a little bit better in here. Go ahead and shut this. On 
the front side of the engine hatch, you have this fire port right here. That's to insert a handheld fire extinguisher if you need to put out a fire in the engine compartment. You never wanna lift this up if there's a fire because you're just adding essentially fuel to the fire, oxygen to the fire, and could explode in your face. Having the Halon system in this boat, really great option, just a safety peace of mind, but you also have a fire port right there to stick a fire extinguisher in if needed. This boat also has the optional hard top, giving you plenty of shade up top, does have some speakers in it as well. Your observer seat on the port side here, this seat back will flip flop forward as well. So you can get a different seating position on the back side, sitting it forward so you can sit traditionally. And then this seat cushion will pop out, giving you access down into the storage area below, which we saw earlier. Also down in that area, is your um, stereo amplifiers. In-floor storage. So you have some lockers, again, like the one we saw in the walkthrough. Plenty of storage space in here for your gear. As we move forward under the helm, this is the head compartment. So you have your toilet in here. That right aft cushion in there, that does lift up. This boat has a sink option in the head compartment as well. You have some buttons right over there to the side for the light and water pressure. So if you need to use the sink, you need to turn on that water pressure switch and then you can use the handle on the sink to control the water flow. Because this is an enclosed space, it does have a little alarm um, just in case uh, you're taking on some water. So you have your bilge alarm. And then right next to the toilet, there is a little black button down there. That is your flush for the toilet. Now, if you're taking the boat in and out of the water every day, the system will depressurize. So you might need to press and hold that for a couple seconds in order to get some water back into the system. So again, that was that sea strainer we saw in the engine compartment. You just have to prime the system essentially by holding it down for a minute, and then you can go ahead and use the toilet. Moving forward, we have our wind block door right here. That can deploy out, keep the wind out, especially when you have the windshield closed. Garbage can over right here. Coming up into the bow area, another in-floor storage right here. And these are all nice turn and lock latches, so nice and easy to use. You know it's in the locked position. If the red dot is facing up, that means it's unlocked. Red dot facing down means it's locked. Nice armrest. Storage underneath the front cushions. And your optional windlass is stored up here in the anchor locker. 100 feet of anchor road chain in this case in this boat. You also have your safety line, making sure you hook that onto the anchor when it's all the way up. This is just a safety measure to make sure that the anchor stays secure and up in the boat. Even if the windlass were to have an issue, that line will keep the anchor up and secure on the boat. You see your little windlass control right there, and there's actually another one back at the helm. Speaking of the helm, let's go ahead, go back there. We'll take a look at the Garmin screens, all the buttons and switches and their operation. Here we are at the helm of the A29. Big, nice Garmin screen, super easy to read, really, really user-friendly. Um, the default view from Cobalt is kind of this view you see here where the navigation maps is on your port screen and then kind of your gauge functions are on the starboard screen. Your nav map will take you kind of wherever you need to go. So you can zoom in or out with the plus or minus button. You can also pinch or pull with your fingers. If you're ever kind of off in no man's land and want to get right back over the boat, this stop panning button will appear if you're kind of off center to the boat. Push that and it'll take you back right over the boat and then you can zoom back in to see where you are. Around the perimeter of the screen, you have these readouts right here. So in this case, there's water temperature. It's actually lake water or sea water temperature, your current course heading, GPS speed and depth. You could actually change those readouts if you want to. It's just a matter of pushing and holding replacing the data with whatever information you'd like, and then that will read out to you. Now, keep in mind this, for example, isn't a sailboat, so you're not gonna have sailing instrumentation on the boat. Um, so some of the information that you could, for example, select, um, you're not gonna actually have that sensor installed in the boat, so you're not gonna get an actual readout. So just keep that in mind when you're, if you are kind of going in and customizing things. 
this waypoint button back down here. Waypoints are your like point of interest or you know if you see something out in the in the water that you want to take caution towards or something like that you can label it but essentially what this is is it could be a list of your points of interest and you could select that and it'll pop up and you can navigate to there and then it'll automatically kind of create a route for you which is really cool. The info tab right here if you are on the navigation screen say for example you want to look at tides and currents for kind of where you are. And you can search for nearby stations and actually get actual title, what the tides are doing, currents, things like that, next day, previous day. Get in, kind of go over like a warning manager, just this boat has some GPS connection because it was underneath a, a tin roof before we moved it outside, so it wasn't getting a clear signal. Things of that nature can be found in that info tab. This home button on the bottom, this will take you into the A29 home screen for this port screen. And you have these three readouts, cruising, anchoring, and nav chart. Nav chart just takes you back to the nav chart, but now you have your readouts kind of in the bar on the right. The anchoring brings up both screens to have a different view. So again, your nav map with your information on the right side bar, but on the starboard side screen, it kind of gives you a graph view of what the seabed or lake bed is kind of looking like. So you can see a little bit better um, with your with where you're anchoring. And last but not least is this cruising mode right here. That brings up, again, your nav map with our readouts in the corners. And then it brings up actual like gauges on the starboard screen. So if you want a more traditional gauge look, gauge view with more info, um, the cruising mode from that port side screen is gonna be your, uh, be your best bet. Moving back to the port side screen, this menu button is on my navigation chart menu. I can go in and I could edit the layout if I want. You know, I could split the screen in two or into four or whatever. Uh, and then in my navigation chart menu, I can insert, you know, if I want different looks and things of that nature. The mark button will mark that position that you're currently in. You could, you know, if that wants to be a waypoint or you want to create something or that's like home base for you, you can label it that way. And then last but not least is your SOS. This is going to immediately populate your GPS position where you are. You can select what type of emergency you're having and then that will be sent off to the appropriate emergency services to come and rescue you or the people close to you that you're seeing are having an issue. Moving over to the starboard screen, we are in that default kind of cruising mode. So this is all your engine gauge functions. So at the top in each square, you have your unit voltage and your engine voltage for each battery. Engine hours is displayed in the middle. You have your RPM tachometer there. You have your speedometer, which is read in GPS. Your outdrive position, so that's the propeller unit on the back of the boat. 100% means it's all the way up and 0% means it's all the way down. The four gauges on the bottom are your oil temperature, engine coolant temperature, oil pressure, and then fuel level. You can cycle through different views so if you want to see different information, again, you can kind of customize how you want this to look by pressing and holding and replacing that data. This is typically the view that most people operate in because it has a lot of information. But what's nice about the 430 horsepower option in this boat, it comes with a trip meter. So you can actually get some fuel flow and um, readings from, from there, which is really nice. Now in this screen, when I hit the home button, it takes me to the A29 kind of look home screen. So you still have your RPM and speed, fuel level, engine temperature, oil, uh, excuse me, outdrive position right here. And then on the left side, you have outdrive position again, battery voltage, water temperature, so lake water, and then depth. So kind of just a different look for the screen itself. When you go back to this home button and this view right here, this gives us access on the right side. So swiping left will bring up a favorites tab. You can also go into smart mode, which is again, that cruising and anchoring mode that we saw before. We just don't have nav on this screen because that's on the port side screen. You can set up different combinations that you'd like each screen to have if you want to do that. Go into charts. So we saw a nav chart before. A fishing chart, when you zoom in on the water, it just gives you more contouring of the seabed so you can actually see kind of where you're going, where stuff is, stuff of that nature. Back to our charts. A 3D chart is giving you more a 3D view kind of looking down on the back of the boat. 
going back to charts in the fisheye, kind of looking from the bottom of the boat up, giving you a kind of a 3D look of the seabed. Um, if you're in really, really deep water, this isn't gonna work very well, but if you're in you know, medium depth, um, you know, 100 feet or less or so, it should be able to populate and kind of give you a, give you a look from the bottom. When we're swiping over, the last thing is this uh, one helm AV engages button. And this is where you're gonna access your SC lighting controller. This is gonna be for your optional RGB interior lights as well as your underwater lights. So you can first turn them on by pressing you know, your white or your red. And then from there, your RGB interior lights are your accent color. You can go in and you can change your color. You can change how bright it is right down here. Going back, just touch outside of anywhere. If you want your underwater lights to be a different color, you can do that as well just right here. So that's how you control them. Um, first, like I mentioned, turning them on here is how you can select the color. Um, we'll get down to the switches here. You actually have to turn the switches for either underwater light or RGB on and actually for the lights to illuminate. This is just how you actually get the controller started is by selecting the appropriate color up here. Then when you're all done, you can turn them all off and then turn your appropriate buttons off on the bottom as well. And then to get back to your main home screen is right here. Going into the settings tab, you can do that on either one. Say for example, you're having issues with your brightness. Um, you can go into your system, go into your display, and then you can go to your backlight and you can hit auto or go up and down. So you can see how it's automatically dimming because we're in some sunlight right here. Um, so that's kind of a, another way to play around and get your displays to read just right. And the menu for this one is to edit our home page. Like we saw on the navigation side, we could edit the navigation page. On this one, the menu, you can go in and you can edit the home page itself. Below the screens are all of our switches. So you have your horn, your bilge blower. So this is, you wanna make sure you run this for approximately four minutes before starting the engine. Just, it's like an engine vent. Uh, it clears out any stagnant air that might be in there before you fire up the engine. Bilge pump. It's going to actually automatically come on if there is some water in the boat, but you can manually turn it on here. Logo lights. These are our lights uh, kind of shining up the A29 logo on the back of the boat. Optional docking light switch right here. And then over on the right side, you have your underwater light switch. So if you want to turn those on, again, you have to go to that SC light controller as well to turn those on and play with those. Same thing with your RGB interior lights. Cockpit lights are just some white accent lights. And then you have anchor light and navigation light. Navigation lights will turn on your red and green light on the front of the boat, as well as your anchor light on top of your all around light, as it's also referred to. If you are anchored out in the evening time, just turn on your anchor light to alert other boaters that you are anchored and not underway. Trim tab control here, up and down. So if, say the port side of the boat's kind of high or up, you could push down right here and that will lower that side of the boat. Just do it in small increments because it is pretty sensitive. And then you have your EVC screen right here. It, this is a redundancy of the information that we see on all of our gauges. So you can scroll from left to right to get different engine information to display on there for you. Steering wheel is mounted onto a tilt base so I can push the bottom and go up and down with it. Ignition, just to the left, you have several keys on here. So you have an actual cobalt ignition key and your second set of keys also has that as well. And the ignition keys insert upside down. So just kind of keep that in mind. The silver key on the keychains that locks our glove locks over on the port side. And this boat does have the optional wireless charger on top of the glove box over there. Um, and then your black keys that are on the key ring, these lock your in-floor storage. So if you actually need to securely lock those, uh, those, this black key will insert next to the lock and actually lock those. And then this is a little, they refer to this as a fuel key. Not the your boat needs this because you have a different style cap, uh, but it's just included on all boats because maybe your boat neighbor or somebody you see at the field lock struggling with their fuel cap, you could uh, help them out by uh, allowing them to use that real quick if they need access to that. This boat does have the um, Infinity head unit right here. So turning it on, it's just the press of the power button right there comes on your menu knob right here for up and down. You can also change the zone volume for each zone of the boat. So you can just press the volume button. It deselects that one. 
Then I can scroll down to zone four, three, two, or one, select that zone, and then I could turn up just that zone if I wanted to. If I wanna go back to all volume, I just need to go back up to the main volume, press in, and then everything will raise or lower from there. The menu button just goes into the main menu right there. I can play or pause or mute. The Bluetooth button, when I press that, that brings up all my sources. I could do the same thing at the top. It just will cycle through them individually. It's, this is like your source menu where you could scroll and find your appropriate source of music you wanna to listen to and then press the knob in. Your uh, list of presets right there. And then your tuner up and down, changing your station or your track if you're uh, listening to Bluetooth or something. To the right of the helm is your throttle. So on the back side, you have a couple buttons which are trim assist, cruise, tow, minus, and plus. Trim assist is an awesome feature that I typically will leave on all the time. This will automatically adjust the trim or your outdrive. So it adjusts the bow trim of the boat. So up and down, depending upon the boat speed. So it kind of will help the boat maintain its correct running attitude while you're underway. This cruise button, when it's on, it has activated this minus and plus button. And actually I could speed up or slow down the boat with the appropriate plus or minus just by pressing it in a couple times. It increases or decreases engine RPM by about 50 RPM increments with each, uh, each press. The tow button above there, that's a software extra. It's a little bit more advanced cruise control, which will help you kind of maintain a certain RPM. Um, again, like I said, it's a software extra. This boat doesn't happen. It's not the most popular option. Just because the EVC system with your electronic throttle is so smooth and easy to control your speed uh, that most people find that the, the tow software upgrade really isn't worth it. Speaking of the throttle itself, to engage the boat to go forward and reverse, just lift up on it and push it forward. Only needs to move about an inch to engage forward. Same thing for reverse, just pull it straight back. You'll kind of feel an indentation right there and that is reverse. So that's how you control forward and reverse. Then as you go beyond that, that's your throttle. So how fast do you want to go in the boat? Your trim, so if manually raising and lowering the outdrive on the boat. Um, when you're putting a boat on a trailer, you always want to make sure before you pull it out of the ramp that your outdrive is all the way up. So you press and hold the up button, and then you can watch on your screen to make sure it's all the way up. This end button down here in the middle, this is a neutral only button, typically just going to be for our service department. When you engage forward, the propellers aren't actually spinning. It's just gonna raise the engine RPMs, get the temp uh, engine up to temperature and make our technicians can make sure everything is uh, working appropriately. Last but not least on the throttle is your safety lanyard. This does need to be inserted right here. If you're out in rough water kind of by yourself, I'd recommend putting this guy on just in case you fall overboard or fall over in the boat. This will pop out and it'll actually shut the engine off. If you're having a weird beep every, you know, 10 or 15 seconds or so, more than likely this safety lanyard's about to fall out. Just give it a firm push back in to make sure that it's uh, securely into place. The helm seat that we're sitting on, it does have a nice flip up bolster, so I'm sitting up nice and high, but I can also deploy that down if I want to sit a little lower. And this seat moves fore and aft with my little lever right here. I have some charging points in the back corner as well as some physical audio inputs towards the front right there. Windless control, and then I have a manual override for my Halon system in the engine compartment. So if I know there's a fire, I can pull the pin out, pull that where it says fire towards me, and that will actually turn on that uh, fire extinguisher in the engine compartment. And last but not least down there, that is your fire extinguisher monitor, so that's just gonna be glowing green as long as the system is charged up correctly. When your 10 gallon holding capacity for your toilet is full, your pump out, your waste pump out is just right here. So flip up the little knob, unscrew it. Keep in mind though, that this does not have a safety lanyard on it. In order for the pump out to create a vacuum seal, you can't have anything in here, so make sure you don't drop this in the water. You can insert the pump out, turn it on, pump out your waste, and then you're ready to go. On the port side of the boat is your water tank fill. It holds 18 gallons. You push this in, turn it to the left a little bit and the cap will actually pop out. This way it's nice and easy to unscrew. And this does have a little safety line on it so you're not losing it into the water. Put a garden hose in here, let the tank fill up. Once it's all the way full, just put the cap back into place. Screw it down nice and snug. Doesn't need to be super tight because it does have a rubber seal on there. 
And once it's kind of just bottomed out like so, push in, give a little turn to the right, and then the cap's nice and flush. On the starboard side of the boat is where your fuel cap is. The boat holds 121 gallons of fuel. Pop the little bottom part open, give it a quarter twist, and then it'll pull out just like so. You do have a safety lanyard on here, just make sure it again, it's not falling in the water. When you're ready to put it back into place, make sure the handle's pointing straight up. Slowly turn to the right, and then your red dots will line up to show you that it's all secure. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed our tour of the Cobalt A29 today. I really appreciate you guys clicking in and checking out the video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us here at Seattle Boat. We'll see you guys on the water. Take care. Bye now.